what is the optimal treatment option for the fracture? I think that's a key question when you're faced with that injury, regardless of the injury. Uh, you must not compromise your choice of the bony fixation just because of the nerve injury. And the choice of iron nailing and X-fix are put in there for completeness. And to catch you out, as you can see, iron nailing in the face of a radial nerve palsy is asking for trouble because you just do not know whether you are causing further injury to the radial nerve. And above elbow cast for this injury uh, would end up causing significant stiffness of the elbow joint. So the options really are in between functional bracing and plating. But functional bracing, it's probably not such a good method to control this particular fracture where the angulation may be difficult to maintain until sufficient union occurs. Particularly in view of his high demand, uh, the dominant arm as a musician in a young, fit, healthy individual looking for early return for activity. In my opinion, the best treatment for that fracture, for that individual, is plating. Then it comes to the consideration of the nerve. If there is a nerve injury already, and if I am planning for an operative fixation, and I think if I do not expose the nerve formally, I will be asking for trouble. So in this situation, my preferred approach will be plating, but with formal exploration of the radial nerve. In terms of the surgical exposure of humerus, you may choose the anterolateral approach. If you choose so, I will urge you to expose the radial nerve between the brachioradialis and brachialis at the distal part of the humerus, because this is an area where the nerve is at risk, and I've seen the nerve being squashed under the plate. For the posterior side, you can do the standard tricep split. But over time, I have evolved to favoring paratricipital approach. The, the benefit of paratricipital approach lies in the fact that the whole triceps is preserved and it also allows very good access to both medial and lateral side of the humerus, allowing me to complete the bony work and the nerve work as necessary. The trick is to find the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, as you can see in this picture, and then you can follow it up more approximately when you come to the main nerve. So, how long does one wait? If you are sure that the nerve is not going to come back or is ruptured, then really there's no benefit in waiting. The reason we wait is because we are unsure, and we're using time as a tool for the nerve to declare itself whether it's going to recover or not. In a low energy injury, close fracture, it is true that most nerves will be intact. The question whether it is a degenerative or non-degenerative lesion. In a true neuropraxic lesion, you should expect to see some sign of recovery in a matter of days and maybe two or three weeks. However, in a degenerative lesion such as in an axonomesis, in the fracture that in, is in the distal third zone, if you look at the distance from the fracture to brachioradialis, which is the first muscle to be re innervated there is some 12 cm. So you should expect at least four months before sign of recovery can be expected. But the time has to be adjusted depending on the, the energy involved as well as the level of fracture. Now, it's commonly advised that you review the patient in six weeks and make a decision at that point. I think you'll be fine for a neuropraxic lesion. However, in axonomatic lesion, you may find yourself in a situation where the nerve hasn't recovered, where the bone is beginning to unite and there is inflammatory mass. So the fixation and exploration at this time, while it's not impossible, is more difficult. It's so in such cases, I would much prefer to intervene early. On the other hand, in fractures where the alignment are acceptable and the personality of the fracture is such that they will do fine with conservative measure, then I would tend to wait for four months, sometimes even longer. For instance, in this case, in a very elderly gentleman with multiple comorbidities, wheelchair bound, I think the choice is very obvious from the beginning that he is a candidate for conservative treatment. The last question relates to what to do if you encounter a cut nerve and when you are fixing the fracture. 
The question is whether you have the right skills and whether you're supported in your institution to perform what is necessary. I would suggest that you should proceed with bony fixation as you have planned to do so because the exposure is already done. Now what to do with the nerve is more complicated. It's very rare that in such situation that primary anastomosis is possible. There will be a zonal injury and more often than not, nerve grafting will be needed. And the other issue to consider is whether the tissue bed is favorable for nerve grafting. So if you're unsure, it will be acceptable to simply tag the nerve ends loosely with sutures, but finish what you set up to do and then refer the patient to your local nerve specialist promptly. So my take home message for you all is ask not what you want to do for the nerve, rather ask what you want to do for the bone. Thank you.